right, so in this video, I wanted to take a look at how Blender works with animation layers, how you can make you know large changes to an animation non-destructively. So I've got Blender open up here, and I first wanna show the process that you normally take with Blender using Blender's nonlinear animation editor. And then I wanna show a plugin that makes it significantly faster and easier than using Blender's built-in tools to do this. So, so if you're coming from Maya and jumping into Blender and you're like me and you use animation layers all the time, jumping into Blender and experiencing their nonlinear animation editor is going to be a bit of a struggle. It's probably, for me at least, probably one of the, honestly, the worst parts about Blender is how it works with animation layers. Um, I've heard talk that they are working on kind of like revamping this whole system. So hopefully that comes soon. For me, it's just way too convoluted. I want a really simple way to work with animation layers. Unfortunately, Blender's built-in tools don't really allow that. So I will be showing a plugin, but real quickly, I kind of want to just show the basic process. So I've got this simple, just idle animation here playing. Um, so with an animation layer, let's say I've created this idle animation and I want to really change the pose up, but I want to keep the actual animation. So I want to keep this breathing cycle, but I want to change the overall pose. So that's where an animation layer would really come in handy. So in this top panel, I've got the nonlinear animation editor open. Down here, I have the action editor. So what I first need to do is I want to take this idle animation that I have here. You can see all my keyframes. I want to push this down to a clip within my nonlinear animation editor. So I'm gonna do push down. And now I actually have got this idle animation onto a single clip. So there's lots we can do with this clip and I'll probably make a video talking more about clips and blending clips so we can quickly make transition animations like going from a walk cycle into a run cycle. You can use these clips to basically blend between those animations. Similarly, if you've watched any of my Maya tutorials where I talk about animation layers, uh, specifically on the walk to idle animation transition uh, video that I have. So I've created this new clip within the nonlinear animation editor. So now what I wanna do is press A to select all of my keyframes and I'm gonna hit new and I'm just gonna name this new pose. All right, so for that, what I wanna do now is start tweaking this pose. So I've added a new action. So I've got my clip under it, my idle looping clip, and I've added a new pose action to my action editor. Now, if you see when I do that, we still got our idle animation playing, so that's working great. So let's go in here and actually start adding in some keyframes. So I wanna change this pose up. So let's say I wanna bring the hips down, and I can tweak this really any way I want. Maybe I can tweak the arm, maybe bring it a little bit closer to the body, make small adjustments to this pose, and I can make you know large adjustments to this pose as well. All right, so we've tweaked the pose, but something's happening here. The controls that we tweaked, it's basically no longer using the animation in the actual idle clip here. So you can see we've got like this animation happening on the chest. There's still some obviously like breathing motion happening, but when we moved the main torso control, that basically just removed any of that animation playing on the clip. Same with this arm. So we've got the torso no longer moving at all. It's completely locked in place. We don't get that up and down breathing motion. So that's kind of an issue that we need to deal with. So to fix this, let's actually go into the new pose here in the nonlinear animation editor, and I'm going to click that. And under extrapolation, I want to change, or excuse me, under blending, I want to change this from replace to combine. And when I do that, it's going to break my animation. And this is something that I've ran into. And if you know a solution to this, please leave it in the comments below. Um, so I tweaked my pose when it was in replace mode. So I tweaked that pose. But now when I set it to combine, because I want to combine it with the idle animation that's looping, we get this, you know, strange strange effect happening here, where it's kind of moving my pose around. So when we switch this to the combine, it's not really giving us what we want. This pose is kind of completely messed up. So what I wanna do is select everything, and I'm just gonna hit that delete button on the action editor to delete that new action I created. And I wanna start fresh, so I'm gonna press A to select everything. I'm gonna hit new, I'll name this new pose. There we go. And then in here, before I do any changes to the pose, before I change any position of the controls, I wanna select 
this in the nonlinear animation editor. I want to make sure it's still set to combine, which it is. And then I can come in here and start adding my keyframes. So I can start moving this around. Maybe bringing the hips a little bit lower, grabbing the arm control, moving this around, bringing it a little bit lower. That's honestly a worse pose, but I'll just change it just to kind of show, show the difference here. So, all right, so now we've got the new pose updated here and it's playing the animation underneath. So I can make even a larger change to this to actually really show that it's completely changing the pose, but it's keeping the looping breathing animation. So now if I do this, you can see we still got our hips moving up and down and we're able to basically keep all that animation from the idle clip and just use it and completely change uh, the pose. And then what we can also do is on this new pose in the nonlinear animation editor and in the action editor, we can actually set this to its own clip. So I can do push down. So we've got this new pose here. And then if I wanted to, I could, you know, hide that in the nonlinear animation editor to basically remove that animation layer. So now it's only playing the idle animation. And then I can turn that back on to see what the change I made looks like. So that way we can actually work with these like you would with regular animation layers. You can move it down to a clip, then you can actually, you know, hide it, disable that from playing if you want to. And then you can also, you know, delete this clip as well to completely remove it if you want to make a big change and you don't like the change that you made. So that way you can work non-destructively. So this is just a really rough overview of working with animation layers inside of Blender. This is a method that I find is just a little bit too complex. You're, you're having to add new actions in there. You're having to move them down to the nonlinear animation editor. You're having to tweak them. You got to make sure that you go in here and you set the right blending option before you actually tweak the pose. A lot of things that you need to remember, a lot of steps that you have to take in order to simply just create an animation layer. So that just makes it too complex. So what I want to show now is a plugin that you can get for Blender that basically makes animation layers work very similar to how they work inside of Maya. So this is the add-on here, it's animation layers. I'll make sure to link it in the description below. The biggest downside to this add-on is that it is 28 US dollars to purchase this. I will say that out of all the add-ons you can get for Blender and any add-on that costs money, this is probably the one that I would recommend getting the most because it does significantly change how Blender works with animation layers and it just simplifies the entire process, making it work very similar to how it would work in Maya. It's a very simple UI. You don't have to worry about making sure you're going in there and you're setting your blending options. You don't have to work with the action editor and the nonlinear animation editor. You can all do it from one simple UI element. So again, unfortunately it does cost $28, but it is a really great tool that will make working with animation layers a lot easier. And hopefully Blender changes how it works with animation layers in the future. Um, so you might not have to purchase this at some point if Blender revamps kind of their whole nonlinear animation editor. Uh, but until then, let's take a look at this, this plugin here. So what I've got here is I've opened the scene up again, completely fresh. So I'm working with the same idle animation. I'm going to keep the action editor and the nonlinear animation editor open. And once I've got that plugin downloaded, all we need to do is come over here to the animation tab. If we open our side panel by pressing N and I just want to select any one of these controls here. And then under the animation layers tab, which again, you download this plugin, you'll see it here. We can do turn animation layers on. So it added this new UI element. And what I want to do now is just hit the plus icon to add a new animation layer. So when I do that, you can see it's still working with Blender's uh, nonlinear animation editor. It's added all these strips in here, but it's doing this for us. We don't ever need to open this, this nonlinear animation editor up. We can actually just simply use this UI element, hit the plus icon to add a new animation layer, and it's gonna still work with how it would be set up normally, but it's just gonna do all that for us. So as I continue to tweak here, so I've got this animation layer and I've got my base animation. So my base animation is what is containing the actual looping cycle. So I can turn that off and now we've just got our default T-pose. So that base layer is really important and I've added this new animation layer. So I'm just gonna name this pose tweak. All right, and then I can just start adjusting this and I'll just change the pose up a lot just so we can make sure we see a change. And there we go. So it's that simple. 
We don't have to worry about making sure we set our blending modes in the NLA editor. This plugin is doing all of that for us. And all we have to worry about is just hitting the plus icon to add a new animation layer. And it's done it for us. And we can you know, adjust the influence. Obviously tweaking that will adjust how much influence this specific layer has. We can change the blending mode right here if we want to. We can also bake these down and merge these when we're ready to. If we want to get rid of all, all of our animation layers and we're happy with, with the changes that we made, we can continue adding new animation layers just by hitting the plus icon. Maybe I'll make this like a pose tweak on the head for whatever reason if I wanted to turn the head. Now I've got that animation layer there and it's still keeping that base animation looping. And then if you want to, you can hide any of these to remove them. And then if you don't like any of the changes that you made, simply hit this minus button right here to remove that animation layer. And now again, we're just working with our base layer, working completely non-destructively, and we're able to very quickly make all of these changes to our animation. So real quickly, I wanna to jump to another scene. This scene is a walk cycle. So I can go ahead and just show the process on a walk cycle. It's going to be basically exactly the same. So I've got my animation here. I'm going to go to the animation tab. I'm going to go to animation layers. I'm going to hit the plus icon. And if you have any tracks within your NLA editor, whenever you use this animation layer, it's going to have to basically remove all those tracks and start fresh. So it looks like on this animation, I had some NLA tracks created, um, which I don't need. So if I'm using this animation layer plugin, I can just go ahead and remove all those, start fresh, I'll hit okay. And then that will just allow me to use the plugin here. So let's go ahead and maybe I'll select the head here and I'll hit the plus icon, added a new animation layer. So I've got my base layer, which contains my walk cycle, which is great. And then I'm gonna name this like head turn and let's actually do some animation with on, within this animation layer. So with this selected, I'm gonna head a keyframe here. Let's see. Uh, keying available, let me see. I might need to actually, maybe I didn't add this control to the layer. Let me actually remove that. Select the control, hit plus. There we go. That control was not added to that animation layer. And I'll rename this head turn. So let's actually start creating this head turn now. So what I'm actually gonna do is set a keyframe on the last pose here because I wanna make sure that at the end of the cycle, she's looking straight on. So I wanna lock that keyframe down. Same for the beginning. I still wanna keep the same loop that it has. Uh, now I can go in and say like at frame six, maybe I'll start the head turn. She'll, oops, she'll turn. Maybe look to her left. Something like that, hold that for a little bit longer because I'm blending to the keyframe on 35, so it's starting to rotate back. But I might wanna just hold that there a little bit longer and keep her kind of looking in that direction. And then she'll look back. Now this loop is probably too short to actually add a head turn in there because during this cycle, she's just gonna be constantly looking left and then straight. Um, so you'd probably want a longer cycle if you're doing a, a head turn like this within a within a walk cycle. Uh, but this is just a way to kind of demonstrate just creating actual animation within your animation layer and not just doing a straight, just a pose tweak. Uh, you can add that animation layer in there and then just start animating with it. And of course we can go in here and just delete this layer if we don't like that head turn. And then we're just back to our original animation. So a great way again to work non-destructively. So this plugin is really helpful if you like working with animation layers. It's something that hopefully Blender will get something like this built into the software soon. But until then, this plugin is a really, really great option to speed up and simplify the entire process. So if you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.